Hey everybody, this is Perch, and I mentioned this when I did my review of Wonder Woman, um, that this, and so I want to explore it a little bit more, because I think this is a big factor when we talk about the changing landscape of comic book movies and shows. And you may be going, hey, I come to this channel for comic book news, I don't want to hear about streaming services and shows and all the rest, but this is a case where I think things are very linked, and I think it's it's something to kind of watch out for, because it is going to spiral into other comic book films and other comic book shows. And ultimately, we are in a living in a world where it's, it's that all that stuff's very linked to comic books, whether we like it or not. It, it is. And the simple fact of the matter is this the Marvel Cinematic Universe, whether you liked it or you didn't like it, it proved to be financially extremely lucrative for Disney. It was so much so that. Whereas Disney, I think, was had in their mind that Star Wars was what they were going to lead with and push to the point of doing a, a you know, what is going to be a billion dollar expansion to their parks. Um, it Ultimately, when you get the hotel and you get everything in there, um, it's just a lot of money and it's a lot of planning and they're putting a lot of revenue to it. And I think if they had the foresight of looking 10 years in the future, they might have done more with Marvel and less with Star Wars, just based on how it all played out. But regardless, the Marvel Cinematic Universe has been very successful, and part of it is its formula. They put out movies. The movies all go between two and two hours and two and a half hours. Uh, they're they're very similar. It's it's actually interesting. Um, I've seen people who have done the hey, we really love Marvel movies. Let's binge a bunch of Marvel movies, and that's almost always a bad idea because when you binge them you start to kind of pick up on the fact that, you know, there's a lot of very common storytelling cheats that happen over and over and over again. And it's like, oh, these movies are not as different as I thought. It takes it away. Part of what I think made Marvel's movies so successful was they were able to crank them out like every six months for a while, sometimes a little bit faster than that. And when they really got going, it, it was the right timing for people kind of getting into the theater, watching the film, the DVD came out or the digital copy came out uh, right as about a new movie was coming in. It was a right cadence so that you always had kind of that that Marvel junk food that you could consume. And it, it, it was not too quick. So you, you got burned out and it was not too far apart that you, your mind started to wander to other things. It just it, it fit. It was successful as a strategy. Again, whether you like it or not, uh, and it's funny, whenever I do these these videos, these, this commentary like this, somebody will come in and be like, those movies suck. How dare you? Or, you know, by contrast, like, oh, see, so you spent 10 minutes doing a video talking about movies. I, uh, way, way to go. Anyway, ah, the world of extremes. Uh, I, I do, I think I said this in another place as well. There's this uh, uh, Death 2020 bit that is on Netflix. And, and whether you, you enjoy the show or not enjoy the show or whatever, however you feel about it, uh, one thing I think it did capture pretty well is the uh, the kind of the, the boiling of people into extremes. It, it, it did it did manage to, uh, and maybe that's not that funny. Uh, come to think of it, but anyway, it 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 it, it gave us that. So, <laughs> regardless, the point I made in the Wonder Woman uh, video was that this movie clocks in at about two and a half hours. It's about 150 minutes or so of a movie. Um, now th there's some credits and other things in there. So I think that's, that's a little bit exaggerated, but, but let's just go with 150 minutes. Cause it's nice, easy round number to go with. And that's relatively fair when you talk about Marvel's movies lately and what they're doing. Everything is about 120 to 150 minutes right in that zone. And it, they now live in a world where fewer people are going to be going to theaters either because the coronavirus is locked down. Theaters aren't open. Or because even when things open back up again, maybe some people are going to be wary about going to movie theaters, or maybe it's going to be too expensive, or maybe the movie theater companies didn't survive the pandemic. They ran out of cash, and so they're in trouble. Uh, there's lots of reasons why the uh, you know movies probably won't be the same in the theaters. And what also happened during this exact same time span, but was happening before that anyway, is the rise of Netflix and streaming services, which by and large, have not done as many movies. In fact, a lot of the two-hour movies or so that Netflix have put out have not been terribly popular. What is popular is, uh, the, is the shows, whether they're half-hour or about 40-minute, whether it's, it's Stranger Things or whether it's stuff on HBO like Westworld and Game of Thrones. 
uh, whether it's the boys on Amazon, uh, whatever happens to be the Mandalorian on Disney plus, there's this new consumption, new way that these shows are made. But here's the thing. Um, at least at Disney plus, it seems likely that a lot of the shows are going to fit into eight episodes and as, as a season. And those, those shows are all going to be about 40 minutes or so. The Mandalorian was shorter, obviously, but most of them are going to be, yeah, let's, let's just say about 30 to 40 minutes. Okay, so for an eight-episode season, which feels like it's going to become the norm, you're talking about 320 minutes or so of total entertainment. And when you carve out you know, the titles and, and some recaps and other things, you, you may be around 300 minutes of show. Um, why is that significant? Well, because if you look at movies, particularly movies that are trending up to about 150 minutes, that's half. That's half of a season on Netflix or on Amazon or wherever it happened to be. And But yet the whole model and the way the show is produced is dramatically different. In, in many cases, and I think you're going to see this happening more frequently, Amazon does the everything goes out at once binge and purge kind of model. But it feels a lot more likely that we're going to get, especially with heavy competition, this idea of an episode dropping every week. I think that that's, that's, clearly, that's clearly the future. That's what HBO is going to be doing. It's what uh, Disney Plus is going to be doing. There's a lot of talk that Netflix is going to hop to this model as well. And, and it makes sense. Basically, if they do that, it ensures that people subscribe for longer, which is what they're after. It gives them a greater length of time then people just to sign up, watch for a month, drop the account. It's It stretches out that subscription, and during that time, you have the opportunity to entice people with other content, get them hooked on your service. So I think, I mean, that, that feels like the future, for sure. But in that model of storytelling, we have something that's coming out every week, um, and it's it's going head-to-head with movies. Because when, when the Netflix model is going head-to-head with TV... And if you think about just extended cable TV and everything else, obviously they live in an episodic kind of world. But we didn't think about TV competing with movies. It was TV. You had, you know, you, you had sitcoms, you had things that you would watch on network TV or cable TV. And then you would have a movie that you go to the theater for. But in your mind, they were very different things. But in a world where the movies are now coming to your home, like Wonder Woman just did, and like, uh, as we hear from Warner Media, more of their films are doing, and uh, I, and the same thing is true. You know, Mulan ran into some of this trouble. It's a remake, but if you look at some of this stuff, uh, the, hu- the you know our audience, our viewing audience, has gotten way more used to this idea of 300 minutes or so of episodic content that's stretched out over time, and that is your movie. Or maybe you do not watch it week by week, and you binge it all in one place, which is arguably worse. For the movies, because now you're telling more of a story at a pace in which you can consume it, and the people writing this stuff are writing it with like multiple cliffhangers. I mean, part of the reason why the binging model works is that you have, say, eight episodes in a season. Somebody shows up, they watch the first episode, maybe the second episode, they're thinking, ah, you know, I'm going to go do something else after that. I need to clean the house, I need to pay attention to my kids, walk the dog, whatever it happens to be. And the second episode ends in such a cliffhanger, you just, you know, you give the kid the iPad for a little bit more time. You're like, I, I've got to see episode three now. And you keep going. There's multiple places to hook you. So you just keep watching. Yeah, that dog will walk, walk itself. It'll be fine. That's, that's how kind of people have started to adapt and change to watching movies and to watching entertainment. And so when you see something like Wonder Woman comes out, that was clearly made for the theater. That movie was made as a summer blockbuster type film, and it, its whole model and everything that was intended to do was to appeal to that audience, to appeal to an audience that is going to stay kind of stuck to the chair, maybe with some popcorn, and then you know leave, and then there's a DVD out that you could watch from your home like eight months later. That's how that movie was designed and how it functions. And that's why watching it today in, at our homes in this, you know, streaming first kind of model, it feels weird. I haven't seen a lot of reviews talk about this, but if you watch wonder woman, there's parts of it to just feel strange. You are seeing a lot of negative uh, reviews of it, negative comments of it. What's interesting is 
is watching people bend over backwards to figure out a way to not like the thing, but not not say they don't like it in such a way that they get attacked for being like a toxic fan because you're attacking a, a movie with a female lead. So you have to think of new ways. The most inventive one was, uh, would, I think Jeremy Whitley managed to pull out the, uh, uh, this, this movie was dismissive about uh, Arab people. And uh, that was kind of offensive. Or, or the other one was for Soul which Disney debuted on Disney plus. It was initially designed to go to the theaters. And the complaint there is that Tina Fey voiced uh, a character that, that was black at one point and it's, it's racist. So you had people have to, they're having to stretch more to kind of come up because you can't, you got to be careful. You know, you have these movies, it's like, well, this has a, a female lead or, or a black lead. So we have to figure out the right ways to, <laughs> to kind of attack this without attacking it too heavily, because then we'll be accused of being toxic fans, and then it's all downhill from there. Terrible. But what I'm not seeing in a lot of the, the criticisms are the fact that it's it's a movie that was designed for a very different viewing experience that now is awkward. And you, it's it was true with Soul. It was true with Onward, that movie that Disney came out with. It was true for Mulan. It's true for Wonder Woman. I suspect if Black Widow uh, does the day and day, if they, you know, if they ever kind of figure out what to do there, I, I do have to believe that Disney's holding on to Black Widow in part because it's not it's not a strong movie, and I don't say that from a standpoint of you know whether I like the character, dislike the character. I think Scarlett Johansson's fine, everything is fine, but it's a movie that's out. It's you know it's it's a prequel in a sense. It's it's happening backward in time. It's not going to answer the question of you know, what's going on? Is, is she alive? Is she dead? It's not setting up anything with the new Marvel Cinematic Universe. It doesn't have kind of a big stinger that's supposed to, you know, tee up future movies. It's just kind of a supposed to be a solid spy story set in the past. And Marvel, uh, you know, had trained people that each movie is important and it leads to a bigger picture. And it's questionable whether this movie does. So I, I, it feels like that's another reason they're kind of hanging on to it. But I think that there's something to be said here for, if you think about it, you've got Wonder Woman, a movie, 150 minutes, and it's going up against things that are 300, 320 minutes. WandaVision is supposed to be shorter, like 30 minutes or so. And that's where, you know, is the full length of WandaVision about 180 minutes total for that whole series? Well, now you're almost the exact same size and length of Wonder Woman, but built for chapter-based kind of viewing and you know it, it's it, it's just it's interesting to put it in some context there uh with kind of how how movies are changing how the time is different i mean it, it if it does it feel as a viewer like you're getting just a ton more by watching kind of you know an episodic series than say wonder woman even though it's just double the length I, I've been showing this to a couple of people and they've been shocked. I'm just shocked at hearing like, Hey, did you realize that uh, the Mandalorian season two was the runtime was only about 20 minutes more than wonder woman for the entire season. Did, did you realize that? And that's not exactly true. It's a little bit longer than that. But when you take out again, the, the, the clips and the credits and everything else, you just compare apples to apples. Uh, the, the Mandalorian season two is a lot closer in total running time to Wonder Woman than you'd expect. And yet, if you went down the line, most people would, would think that the Mandalorian was much longer than Wonder Woman, just based on how it's paced out. I think that we're looking at a definite need for some dramatic changes to happen to how movies are made, kind of how they, they stream out, how the content happens. Uh, it's going to have to change. And even if the movie theaters all open up again, we're now living in a world where streaming is a very, very key factor to movies and to what they, they are and, and how they're going to be consumed. Um, you might even argue that streaming services will be the dominant player to think about when you're making a movie over theaters. I think that's, that's quite likely. So anyway, something to think about just, just, you know, uh, something to consider. How does this all relate to comics? Well, I mean, there are some lessons to be learned here in terms of, of what happens with comics, how they are produced, how they come out. You could argue that the graphic novel OGN format, uh, you know, weighs into this particular argument. There's there's a lot of, we're, we're living in a, an interesting media shift time and people are going to need to catch up. But what do you think? 
is this a big deal? Am I, uh, am I, I maybe I'm, I'm making a bigger deal out of something very, very small. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, follow me on social media, all that kind of stuff. I appreciate everybody who's listening. So thank you.